Hey, welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to create the game stack color. In this lesson, we're going to show you how to create the player prefab, which is the object that travels down the length of the platform prefab and catches the pickup prefabs. And just a reminder, please subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. Now to get started with creating the player object, you'll want to begin with an empty game object. So you can click the plus sign and select create empty. I've then renamed this object to player. This object then has three child objects, which are all 3D cubes. So you can right click on this player object, go down to 3D object and select cube. This first object I renamed to catch and I changed just the scale of this object to be three in the X, 0.2 in the Y and 0.2 in the Z. You could then duplicate this object and rename it to side for the second child object. This object has a transform position of 0.15 in the X and 0.4 in the Z and a scale of 0.2 in the X, 0.2 in the Y and 1 in the Z. You can then duplicate this object for the third child object and all you have to do is change the X position to be negative 1.5. Now that takes care of all the child objects as the default 3D cube should come with a cube mesh filter, a mesh renderer, and a box collider component. Now there's a couple more things that we need to do for the parent object. The first is that we need to attach a rigid body component. So you can go to add component and you'll want to freeze the rotation in the X, Y, and Z. Then we'll need to add a box collider. So you can go to add component, physics, box collider. Now this box collider will be for the trigger zone on the inside of our goal shaped object. This will be the component that actually interacts with the pickup objects that we created in the last video. So you'll want to set is trigger to true and then you can use the edit collider tool to reposition and size the collider so that it fits inside our cube objects and extends a little bit out in front. This is done by clicking and dragging the handles of our box collider. Now that handles the creation of the object itself. The next thing that we're going to do is add some code to give this player object some functionality. So here I have a new script called player controller stack color. You can create a script by right clicking in your project window, going up to create and selecting C sharp script. Now I'm going to open up the script in my coding environment. The first thing that we need to do inside the script is add some new variables. The first variable is a serialized field of type color and I've called it my color. The next is a serialized field of type renderer, which I've made an array and I've called it my rends. The next is a serialized field of type bool called is playing. The next is a serialized field of type float called forward speed. And the last is a rigid body called my RB. Once we have these variables created, we'll go on to the start function. And the first thing that we can do inside the start function is get our rigid body component and save it into the my RB variable. So I have my RB equals get component and we're looking for a rigid body. Next up, I have a new function called set color, which is found right here. This is a void function with a parameter of type color called color in. Inside this function, we're setting the my color variable equal to color in. We then have a for loop where we're looping through the length of our my rends array. So we have for int i equals zero. I is less than my rends dot length i plus plus. Inside this for loop, we're setting the color of each of the materials belonging to our renderer components. So we have my rends square brackets and we're passing in i for the index. We then have dot material dot set color Set color requires two parameters. The first is a string for which color we want to change. So it's underscore color with a capital C. And the second parameter is the color that we want to change it to. And so I'm passing in my color. We then want to make sure that we're calling this function inside our start function and we're passing in the my color variable. Now this will make it so that we can pick a color in our inspector and when we start the game, each of the 3D cubes that we have as part of our player object will then change to the color that we set in the inspector. Now the next thing that we want to do inside the script is handle the forward movement of our player object. And so we'll go down to the update function where I have an if statement and we're checking to see if the isPlane variable is true. 
If it is true, then we're calling this move forward function, which I'm creating down here. This is a void function with no parameters. And inside this function, all we're doing is calling our myRB variable dot velocity and setting it equal to vector three dot forward multiplied by our forward speed variable. And once you have all of this, you can save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our player object. You can then click and drag the player controller script onto this object in the inspector. The last thing that we need to do before we can test this is set the variables. So I've set the my color variable to a red color. We then need to set the size of our myRens array to three. We'll then grab each of the child objects and drag it into this array. You can then skip the isPlane variable and set the forward speed variable to something like three. And now we can test out our player controller script. So when I click play, you can see that each of the cube objects have changed to the same red color that we've set in the inspector. But our player object still isn't moving forward, and that's because our isPlane variable is still set to false. But if I set it to true, you can see that our player object is now moving forward at a constant speed. Now the last thing that we'll do is create a prefab out of our player object. And this is done by dragging it from our hierarchy to our project window. All right, that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.